Few creatures on Earth are more dreaded, more despised. For millions of years, their kind has ruled the shadowed secret world of the wild, lords of a domain where death is swift and killers come in many forms, elegantly attired and cunningly disguised. Beautiful, deadly, and tragically misunderstood, the snakes endure among us, inhabiting virtually every part of the planet. They are supreme survivors, artfully adapted to their role as efficient predators. Almost 3,000 species of snakes crawl the earth, hunters of a world hidden from our eyes. In this world, they are the masters, and all of creation is held in their spell. forest in Amazonia, a young squirrel monkey fears for its life. Barely one year of age, the monkey has never encountered a boa constrictor. But it knows to be afraid. The boa is a monkey killer and it drags its heavy body high into the treetops in search of unsuspecting prey. The tiny saddleback tamarind would make an ideal meal. For the agile little monkeys, it would be easy to escape from the slow moving snake. But instead, the monkeys stay to mob the predator, to worry it and drive it from their domain. Confronted by their nemesis, the monkeys react instinctively, betraying ancient fears, an echo, some say, of our own deep dread of serpents. In the eyes of monkeys and of men, snakes have always played the role of villain. But perhaps it is because we fear the serpent that we find it so intriguing. To learn the secrets of the snakes, we will join them in their world on a far-reaching journey which will take us first into the steamy heartland of the tropics. It may have been in a place such as this, almost half a billion years ago, that the first land animals stalked the earth, the ancestors of the modern snakes. Today, the tropical forests are the most ancient habitat upon the planet. They are home to the greatest abundance and diversity of species found anywhere in the world. A garden of Eden, a green hell. Both descriptions apply just as well to this place where life runs riot and death is only a heartbeat away. In this throng of crawling things, each creature that lives is another creature's prey and competition is intense for every inch of space.
This rich brew of life makes the tropical forest a paradise for predators. In the food chains of the forest, the vegetarians form the first essential link. By consuming fruit and foliage, they process the forest's resources. To the creatures that hunt them, the three-toed sloth and the Amazon squirrel are tempting packets of protein. Here, survival is the privilege of the cautious and the quick. All snakes are predators, and some of the most gaudily garbed are the most deadly. The aquatic coral snake, elegant kin of the Indian cobra, packs one of the most potent venoms known to man. Fortunately, it is reclusive, seeking its prey in the dark, damp litter of the forest floor. But even the treetops provide no refuge from lethal serpents. The brown tree boa is a master of camouflage. Disguised as a gnarled twig, it awaits the right moment to strike. Unlike the venomous coral snake, the boa relies on constriction to kill its prey, tightening its powerful coils to choke life from the victim. Then, employing a tactic unique to the snakes, it spreads its jaws to engulf the full width of the prey, and with its thorn-like teeth, pulls it head first into its stomach. Everything, except the feathers, will be digested, a process which may take several days. The mammals that dwell in the treetops are prime targets of the constricting snakes, many of which have developed cunning strategies to hide their deadly intent. Disguised as a tangled vine, the emerald tree boa waits for a meal. Along its upper jaw is a row of heat-sensitive pits specialized organs which permit it to strike accurately at warm-blooded prey, even in the dark. Though the boa's eyesight is weak, the pits provide vital information for the hunt. On occasion, it preys upon parrots, which, like the snake, wear green for camouflage. The boa's tongue tests the air. And then... In the blink of an eye, it is over. With infinite patience and skill, the predator maneuvers its victim so that it may safely be swallowed head first.
As it works the prey into its stomach, the snake clings to a branch, anchoring its body with its powerful prehensile tail. Now the work of digestion begins as potent enzymes in the snake's stomach begin the process of dissolving the soft tissues of the bird. During this long, protracted process, the snake itself is in peril. For in the world of the tropical forest, enterprising hunters always wait to take advantage of the distracted, the unwary. Wherever it goes, the boa constrictor is watched by the creatures of the forest. A specialist in stealth, it is at home in a wide range of habitats. One of the biggest snakes in the world, the boa can reach more than 12 feet in length and weigh more than 200 pounds. If it has to, it will survive for a year between kills. The hiss and the open mouth are intended to warn away enemies. A boa's teeth can inflict a wound, but it is the coils that kill. Its body boldly splashed with patterns of ochre and brown, the big snake is all but invisible in the play of light and shadow on the forest floor. While the young spectacled owl could fly from peril, a small forest possum has good reason for fear. In a week's time, the unlucky possum will be reduced to a ball of indigestible fur and teeth, which the big snake will expel. And then it will be ready to feed again. But snakes are not the only predators in the tropical forest. Night in the Amazon is alive with hunters. spectacled owl stalks the killers. A slender hunter slithers through the dark, its every move watched by hungry eyes above. snake has no defense. Like most serpents, it lacks both venom and constricting coils. In the grip of the owl's sharp beak, it has no choice but to surrender to the role of serving as food for another.
in the tropical forest, it is only the lucky few who manage to escape death in the jaws of a hunter. And every predator, large or small, sooner or later, is likely to suffer the fate of the snake as another predator's prey. In a moment, a life is ended. And in the hush of the jungle night, the handiwork of a million years is rent apart and reduced to a resource to be recycled. In the twilight of the time of the dinosaurs, long before the earth supported grasslands or flowering trees, the dawn broke on the age of the snakes. With the end of the Mesozoic era, a bold new chapter had begun for life on Earth. From the equator to the poles, a revolution was underway. The continents were in motion. A new world was being carved from the old. Soon, the Earth would be crowded with new animals, creatures poised to pursue new ways of life. Among the newcomers were the first birds and a new line of reptiles which had lost their legs. Creatures equipped for a world where prey was abundant and limbs were no longer needed for its pursuit. According to theory, it was in a setting such as this, some hundred million years ago, that the first snake slithered out of the ooze. Today, a cottonmouth pauses to drink in a southern swamp. One of the most powerful and venomous snakes in the US, it waits by the water's edge to devour fish and frogs. Snakes have adapted to a wide range of habitats and have evolved distinct tactics for survival. While some sulk in the shadows, waiting for prey, others rely on agility and speed to earn their living. A special talent of snakes is the ability to remain motionless for long periods of time. And when they move, they are both silent and swift. Though ancient by human standards, the snakes are among the most modern of the reptiles, separated by millions of years of evolution from their remote ancestors, the amphibians. Frogs and their fellow amphibians were the first vertebrates to establish a beachhead on land. But they've never completely left the realm of the water. The early ancestors of the snakes were reptiles with scaly skin. One branch of the clan, the turtles and tortoises, developed hard shells to protect them from predators. The reptiles had taken the first giant steps toward life on dry land. In time, the lizards, which are closest in line to the snakes, laid claim to all the major habitats on the Earth. Desert species, like the horned lizard, or these chuckwallas of the American Southwest, may never see a pond or stream in their lives, while other lizards, like this Indonesian monitor, are at home in the heart of a wet monsoon forest. Resembling a holdover from the age of the dinosaurs, the common iguana dwells along riverbanks in the New World tropics.
a vegetarian by habit, the iguana may reach six feet in length and weigh more than 30 pounds. The Gila monster is one of only two poisonous lizards in the world. And venom is not the only trait it shares with the snakes. It has a forked tongue, a feature also shared with the Komodo dragon. At a maximum length of 10 feet, the dragon is the reigning monster among the world's living lizards. Other traits of the snakes are shared with the alligators and the crocodiles, armor-plated giants beautifully designed for their vocation as voracious predators. Like the snakes, the crocodiles swallow their food whole and must move between the sun and shade to regulate their body temperature. Among the most primitive of the snakes, the pythons and the boas, though lacking limbs and flesh-tearing jaws, mastered the art of killing by using their bodies for constriction. But like their lizard kin, they retained the forked tongue for following the scent trail of their prey. Though the tropics are still their heartland, Snakes have colonized nearly the entire globe, including frigid slopes more than 15,000 feet high in the Himalayas. In some of the coldest reaches of Europe and North America, a few hardy species of snakes can be found. But when the temperature dips close to freezing, they retire to dens underground. Although snakes are not normally social creatures, as many as a thousand prairie rattlers may spend the winter in a single den. Unlike warm-blooded animals, snakes are unable to raise their body temperature above that of their surroundings. And when the mercury drops, they slip into a torpor, a state which may last half the year. pit vipers, including the rattlesnakes, are more tolerant of cold than other snakes. Most prefer places like this, a soggy swamp forest in Florida. Here, where the weather is mild most of the year, the temperate world meets the tropics. The result is a spectacular explosion of life. Reptiles, like the American alligator, find the conditions to their liking and share this lush Eden with dozens of species of snakes. A graceful garter snake lurks in the reeds, hoping to seize a fish or a frog. Nearby, in the litter of dry leaves on the shore, one of America's most formidable hunters hides, the legendary Copperhead. The Copperhead is responsible for more snake bites in the U.S. than any other snake. The bites, however, are rarely lethal and the copperhead's usual victims are small forest creatures tricked by the snake's superlative camouflage. Stunning testament to the success of serpent design. The desert wastes of the American Southwest are another paradise for snakes. Though desert habitats range from grassland to forest, they all share an economy based on a critical shortage of water. Here, in summer, 
surface temperatures can exceed 150 degrees Fahrenheit, and at midday, only capricious dust devils may seem to be astir. Wildfires, sparked by the broiling sun, add credence to the image of a terrestrial inferno, a place unfit for living things. Though life adapts to the most barren of places, those who dwell here tread a tenuous line between survival and death. Like the snakes, many desert creatures have evolved elaborate regimens to help them cope with the grueling effects of heat and drought. The pronghorn is well equipped to deal with the desert's extremes. Its hair contains air cells, which insulate it from the heat, and it is able to obtain much of the water it needs from the shrubs that it eats. The desert cottontail is so adept at the art that it can live its whole life without drinking. Some beat the heat by burrowing underground, while other desert dwellers travel great distances to find the last reserves of standing water. Desert reptiles, like the fringe-toed lizard, obtain most of their moisture from the bodies of their prey. But the greatest advantage reptiles have in the game of desert survival is their impermeable skin. Since they lose no water through perspiration or as urine, they can thrive in the hottest, driest regions where birds and mammals cannot. Of all the desert creatures, the snakes seem most at home in this habitat. And of these, few share the notorious reputation of the coral snake. The Arizona coral snake is one of the most poisonous snakes in America, but it spends much of its life underground, where it hunts other snakes and amphibians. The harmless Sonora Mountain king snake wears similar markings, presumably to startle a potential predator with its bold attire. The Sonoran Desert of southern Arizona is a haven for venomous reptiles. The carcass of a dead saguaro cactus hides a rare delicacy for one of these the clutch of a gamble's quail, flushed from its nest by the beaded marauder, the Gila monster. Though it is armed with powerful venom, the lizard uses this weapon primarily for defense. It prefers to dine on helpless fledglings or to plunder an untended nest. With its snake-like tongue, the monster examines the eggs to determine which it will eat. will consume only part of the clutch, leaving the rest to hatch.
another renowned desert resident, is the creature that single-handedly claims responsibility for more human deaths in the U.S. than any other reptile, the western diamondback rattlesnake. Though the rattler is one of America's most deadly snakes, even this killer is not without enemies. The common king snake is highly resistant to its venom and is fond of including rattlesnakes in its diet. The king snake is a skillful and cautious hunter. Lacking venom, it kills by constriction. Its strategy? To seize the rattler by the head and snare it in its coils. At the first whiff of the king snake, the rattler assumes a defensive posture, arching its body to its maximum height and guarding its head from attack. It is a futile gesture, for the king snake has uncanny skill as a rattler killer. In the king snake's iron grip, the rattler surrenders its life. Now dead, it will be quickly consumed by the predator. The coyote is another foe of the rattler, though an inexperienced pup risks a painful death if it's bitten. To deter predators, the rattler relies on its venom plus a musky spray emitted by anal scent glands. Normally, the rattle may also serve as a warning, a notice to any who would disturb the snake that a careless encounter could be fatal. Successful snake hunters depend on speed and agility to attack the snake before they themselves are attacked. The Roadrunner is one of the best in the business. Skillfully using its wings and its tail as a decoy, the Roadrunner seeks to confuse the snake and to frustrate any attempt it may make to fight back. Then, with the snake distracted, it delivers the fatal strike. Against its usual prey, small mammals such as mice and ground squirrels, the western diamondback is a deadly efficient predator. But like most desert snakes, during the heat of the day, it seeks refuge underground. As it explores the den, it holds the rattles on its tail perfectly still to avoid alerting potential prey. The cactus mouse would make a perfect meal. But like most snakes, the rattler has poor eyesight, and in dim light, it may have difficulty detecting its prey, unless it's in motion. For this very reason, it was once believed that snakes hypnotized their victims, transfixing them with their flickering tongues until they were ready to strike. 
But for the mouse, the possum act is merely a defense mechanism. The best defense of all against a killer with limited vision. Still, legends die hard in the American West. In the eyes of many, the Diamondback will always remain one of the meanest, most magnificent characters of all in a land where life is a grueling test and only the toughest have the stuff it takes to survive. Far from the parched and sun-scorched desert lands is a world of glowering skies and dark horizons, a place hammered daily by drenching, unrelenting rain. Here, terrestrial life faces a test of another kind, the challenge of adapting to a world of water. The rule in the rain-soaked Amazon basin, make your peace with the wet or else perish. The circumstances suit the needs of the three-toed sloth, a vegetarian whose diet is comprised almost entirely of leaves. To all of those who feed in the forest canopy, the rain is a benediction, a life-giving force that renews their world, endlessly recycling its resources. The skin soaking rains and the stifling tropical heat combine to produce the most productive natural habitat on the earth. A place of extravagant extremes, the Amazon is a fitting home for monsters. The anaconda, the world's mightiest snake. Growing to over 30 feet and weighing up to 1,000 pounds, the anaconda is one of the most powerful predators in the world. In Spanish, it is called matatoro, the bull killer. But its main prey are animals that come to the water to drink. Efficiently, the snake does its work, squeezing the last gasp of life from the possum. In no hurry, the anaconda makes certain that the prey is dead before it begins to feed. But the snake has company for dinner. Though the grison poses no threat to the giant anaconda, almost any interruption can disturb the serpent's meal. A South American weasel, the grison is a skilled predator in its own right, the mortal foe of smaller Amazonian snakes. Neither the anaconda nor the grison wants to test the strength of the other.
the verdant swamps of the Amazon, abound in snakes. And there are others, like the brown tree boa, more suited to the grison's appetite. Though a constrictor with no venom, the boa defends itself with its teeth, hoping that a nip will discourage the predator. The tactic works. The world's largest rodent, the capybara, is fitting prey for the world's biggest snake. A young capybara grazes in the lilies along the water's edge. With its tongue, the snake tastes the air, seeking to pick up the scent of its prey. Though one of the most primitive of all living snakes, the anaconda is an expert hunter, the scourge of the unwary. Frozen in fear, the capybara waits. Instinctively, it knows not to move. of death passes by. The forest canopy is a refuge from the hazards on the ground. But for a young golden lion tamarind, even the treetops are a place of peril. The boa constrictor is equally at home in the water and in the trees. In the Brazilian forests where they live, an infant lion tamarind, if unprotected by an adult, can easily fall prey to an enterprising boa constrictor. The snake has the advantage of patience and its phenomenal skills as a climber. But the monkeys can go where no snake can follow. Fortunately for the boa, it can wait for months, if it must, for a meal.
in the fabric of life in the tropical forest, snakes often find themselves in the role of victims, providing food for others. But any predator may, in an instant, become the prey. powerful coils of the anaconda. A kawari meets its death. the giant serpent, there are no heroes and no villains. There are only the winners and the losers in the game of predator and prey. And against them both stands a common foe. Ignited by lightning or set by man, wildfires ravage the serpent's world continuing an age-old cycle of destruction and renewal. Though a world disappears in the smoke, out of the ashes come the seeds of change. individuals perish, life, resilient, adaptable, contains the power to endure. Nature herself is the ultimate predator, the leveling hand that joins all living creatures in a common struggle. charred remains of their world. The survivors come, the predators, as well as the prey, the agents of life and of death. In the world of the serpent, a new day dawns, and the ancient game goes on, the ritual of the hunters and the hunted.